What is going on guys? It is Wednesday. Welcome. I appreciate you guys watching this channel and as I'm growing this channel, I hope you guys are growing with your Amazon FBA business as well and this information is helping you guys. With that said, today let's talk about Amazon step-by-step -step process because I've been getting a lot of questions about how to start an Amazon business. I know I get into the details of different aspects of product research, um, your uh, Amazon account and all these kind of things, but I think I need to do an overall synopsis of what it looks like for you guys. If you're a new seller and you want to get into um, and you want to get into FBA, what things you should be considering, okay? So um, just have my notes here. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything here, okay? So the first one is you guys need to uh, decide whether you're gonna what kind of seller account you're gonna have. Of course, you gotta set up your seller account. So you can set up an individual, or you can set up a professional account. Now the prices are different. Now what you need to do is that in order for you to uh, make sure that you accommodate for the time it takes to bring your products and the time it takes to organize your listing and everything, I would sign up for the individual first, right? Just because it's, uh, it's free and you save up, like let's say it takes you two months for your product to get ready and be sold on Amazon FBA, you are not paying, um, you're not paying it for the months that you're not really using it, right? So you can always switch the account once you get started uh, on Amazon. So don't worry about that, guys. So start with an individual account, do all your processes, take care of your orders and everything, and then you need to do a professional account. Why do you need to switch to a professional account? The number one reason is PPC campaign. So in order for you to use the PPC campaign, which is the advertising platform of Amazon, you need a professional account. So that's why we always switch it right before we launch our product, we switch to a professional account. Second question I get is, do I need an LLC? Which is basically registering your business. Um, so for North America, for the United States, yes, you do need an LLC. And if you are gonna sell in the United States market or Canada, get your business number set up. Get your business number set up because that's how you'll be paying taxes on the products you'll be selling in those markets. It is absolutely crucial that you set them up, especially if you're an international seller. So if you're an international seller from the US side, you need your EIN number, which is your tax number that the customs or the government tracks your shipments and charges you duties and taxes accordingly if your product is not duty free that is. So we do need the IN number and you can go to irs.com and get that set up um, so it's not that hard. On the Canadian side you can contact the CBSA and uh, they will set up that business number for you and that's it. That's how they track how much product you're bringing in, what's your revenue, how much tax you need to pay and absolutely guys like don't go um, make sure everything is legal, make sure you're following it to the teeth because if Amazon uh, catches any whiff of something fishy happening, they will close your account and they will ban you from selling on Amazon. So please do not get into that kind of trouble. I know there is a little bit of cost associated, but please set it up the right way. Okay, the next stage is probably the most important stage of your, um, of your Amazon, uh, of your Amazon career, so to speak, the starting point of it is product research. We want to start and have a really strong basis with our product research because this will be the product that you can build on everything else, right? So if this product is successful, it means that you can add products to your catalog, <coughs> sorry, and so on and so forth. So product research is the number one key thing you need to focus on when you're selling on Amazon. So what tools do I use? So the first tool that I have actually done a few um, tutorials on is the Jungle Scout tool. It is the Chrome extension that I use L along with Merchant Words. So take the, get, uh, get yourself familiarized with these tools because this will uh, help you guys figure out if a product is profitable and what industries and what categories to sell products in because based on profitability and based on this research, which I'm going to do another video on Friday for you guys, um, you can tell what products to sell. So Jungle Scout is the main one I use extensively. It's the Chrome extension that I have. And uh, guys, there's a 20% discount coupon code in the bottom in the description for you guys. Uh, so you can take advantage of that. So it's $97 USD. 
but you can get it for 20 percent off so uh, so you can get that monthly subscription sorry for 20 percent off and there are other services that i've managed to get 15 percent off so take advantage of that and then there's also merchant words link which through one of my mentors you can get a 70 percent off so 9.99 a month that is absolutely a steal make sure you have these proper products in order to do your research as you're doing your research you have to make sure you check on seasonality and patterns you have to see i, I absolutely um encourage you guys not to sell seasonal products if it's your first time seasonal products are specifically for veterans and if you get into it you might run into trouble that you don't know how to get out from so seasonal products avoid it patents on the other hand you always make sure you check for patents because if there is a product that's patented and you start selling it you will get sued by the patent holder now make no mistake guys that they will catch up to you you may sell it for a few months but they will catch up to you and the penalties are hefty and that's it like you cannot sell on amazon so you do not want to run into those kind of troubles okay once we found our product the next thing is where can we find suppliers suppliers you find on alibaba right that's the main one i use so on alibaba you do your research um, and you make sure that these are trusted suppliers you use a template that I have gone over with you guys in previous videos I'm gonna post the links below so use templates make sure you sound professional make sure they take you seriously because that is gonna decide whether they'll take advantage of you and provide you with crazy pricing or they will take you seriously and actually will provide you the best pricing so that's our next step before we get into freight forwarders and how to ship your product to an Amazon FBA warehouse. So once you've figured out your supplier, you want to ask freight quotes from them if they included in your price, how much difference there is. You also want to get quotes from individual forwarders or private forwarders. There are tons of them around the world, guys. So you want to make sure you get three to five different quotes for your shipping because that can consume a lot of your money, a lot of your manufacturing costs and shipping costs. So guys, get a few quotes and decide on the best one for yourself. Decide whether you're going to do air or ocean, depending on when you're bringing the product. Now, one of the tricks that I use, I always bring some air because it's faster. And if it's a product that I want to sell right away and then the rest ocean so you have enough supply that by the time your ocean shipping comes in right you've gone through your air shipping product the ones that came by air you have a product to sell and before you run out your ocean shipment will come in and will this way you don't pay a full price on air freight and you get most of it ocean because as you guys know ocean is way cheaper than air right just because of the timelines and everything Okay, the next stage is to create a logo for your business. Now, you can go on Fiverr and pay somebody 35 bucks or if you know anybody that is into graphic design, right? Create a logo, personalize your item. And then once you create a logo, your logo, send that logo to your supplier because they need to slap it on your product, right? That's how you build a brand. You want to make sure that the product has enough um, with it enough uh, enough of your branding in it so that when the buyer buys it right they can actually see that this is a brand you know it, it just brings more legitimacy um, it's not just a brown box with a product in it you know what I mean and that's how you build your company so you have to think ahead of time you have to think every opportunity that you can get how you can promote your brand and how you can really uh, build up your brand right from ground up so always always make sure that you ask your supplier if they allow or if they can slap your logo when you send it to them on the product and print it on the boxes or whatever to make sure that it is specific to you now the last portion of product research or this phase is to get your upc code so upc code is a specific code for your product now it you got to keep in mind that let's say if you have 500 of like a black t-shirt um in size small right you do not need 500 different upc codes you purchase only one and slap it on one variation if it's a different variation like it's not black it's white now yes you do need another upc code but you need one upc code per variation so that's why i tell you guys that when you're selling product make sure you're selling a product that there's not too many variations especially apparel because what happens is a lot of people will buy one variation and then there will be other variations that would not sell like 
how many times have you guys gone to the mall have seen extra small or extra large not selling right that's why they do sales on those things because not a lot of people buy it so that's why it's try to stick to products that have one or two or three no more than that variations so you don't run into unnecessary costs guys okay guys since i don't want this video to be too long and too overwhelming and there's a lot of content to go over let's break it down into two videos and i'm gonna go over the rest of the points in the next video um we will do that before we do any product research stuff so um that's it so today thank you so much for joining me like subscribe hit the uh, bell button so you can get notifications on the next video and if you have any questions so far drop it in the comments below and i'll be happy to answer you guys part two will be coming on friday so make sure to check that video out as well because these two videos are connected. I just do not want it to be too long and too overwhelming. Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.